Hi all, today I'm showing you how to make my grandma's fried chicken two ways. She either made the batter method or she used the paper bag method. They're both are delicious. Um, either one you'll be happy with. It is a long video for me, it's 15 minutes. I hope you enjoy. Equipment and ingredients you'll need. A mixing bowl. Four, six, cup storage containers, a six quart Dutch oven and a pair of tongs, a baking sheet and a rack, a quarter cup and one cup measuring cups, measuring spoons and a whisk, 10 pounds of chicken leg quarters, three cups of white lily all purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, three quarts of full fat buttermilk, three cups of cornstarch, three quarts of peanut oil, three tablespoons of freshly ground black pepper, three tablespoons of onion powder, and three tablespoons of garlic powder. Now I start off by making um, the brine for the all the chickens that I'm doing, whether it be the paper bag or the batter. And it's three quarts of full fat buttermilk. And I put in a half a cup of sugar and a half a cup of kosher salt. And I mix thoroughly. And then I'm gonna set it aside until I'm ready to work with it. Cause now I've got to butcher the chicken, which is quite an ordeal. <laughs> I had to cut up 10 pounds of chicken and um, chicken legs, chicken quarters. And if you're squeamish, please turn away. <laughs> I'm not showing you everything because it was quite involved. You'll see me cracking this bone right now. It's pretty gnarly, but uh, I'm not squeamish, so I got through it. And it was very inexpensive to do it this way. It cost me $7 to get 10 pounds, so it was well worth it. And once I cut everything up, and then I'm gonna put everything in the brine. And now I'm brining 10 pounds of chicken pieces. And um, I wish I had a bowl. I didn't have, I want one of these big bowls. I'll get bowls the right one eventually. Um, seeing the steel with lids, I don't have one. I wish I did. Um, so I had to put them all in these six cup <laughs> storage containers and once I put everything in there I'm gonna brine for 24 hours up to 48 and if you have a problem with salt just do the buttermilk you don't have to do the the salt or the sugar and it's gonna stay in the refrigerator for 24 to 48 hours and then we're gonna work with it but first, I'm going to make the batter because that also has to be refrigerated for 24 hours. And it's just a cup of white lily all-purpose flour, a cup of cornstarch. Um, it's a tablespoon of freshly ground pepper. Now, you can add more if you want, but this is just the original recipe I'm showing you. And I'm going to do a tablespoon or a teaspoon of baking soda, a tablespoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of onion powder, and a teaspoon of kosher salt. I'm going to mix well, and after I've done that, then I'm going to add the water. And it's one and three-fourths cups of water that I'm going to add. And I'm going to mix very well, because I want to make sure everything's incorporated. Now, what's going to happen is the flour is going to be hydrated by the water and get thicker, make the whole mixture thicker, but also being in the refrigerator is going to thicken it up. So I just want to make sure everything's thoroughly incorporated before I put it in the storage container to be in the refrigerator for 24 hours. And it's not that much batter, it's only four cups. And now I'm gonna move on to making the coating um, for the paper bag method. And I normally don't make 10 pounds <laughs> of fried chicken at once. So I realized once I put it all in the bag, so basically it's one cup of white lily flour, one cup of cornstarch, um, a tablespoon of pepper, a, a tablespoon of onion powder, a tablespoon of uh, garlic. It has a teaspoon of salt. Of course, there's no baking soda because we're not doing a batter. I'm just mix it all together 
I'm going to put it in the paper bag. And that's when I realized that I need more. <laughs> because I don't cook 10 pounds of chicken normally. All at once, it's usually a small chicken I do. Um, that I butcher. It's always cheaper to butcher your own, your own chicken. And I realized when I'm looking in the back that I don't have enough because I don't make that, usually 10 pounds of chicken. <laughs> so I just mix them up real quick. Same exact um, measurements of flour and everything and spices. Now you can add cayenne. We don't add cayenne. This is the original recipe. Now I'm gonna shake off uh, a little bit of the, of the brine and I'm gonna buttermilk brine. I'm gonna put it in the bag, no more than two pieces at a time. And I'm gonna shake, shake, shake and then I'm gonna put it on the plate. And after I get everything on the plate, I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator for at least four hours. But I always come back and check it because there's a, probably a lot of, there's a lot of brine on this chicken, even though I've shook shick, it off. Um, and you're gonna have wet spots and you really don't want that many wet spots. So what I do is I always, if I see a lot of wet spots, I'll toss the chicken back in the bag and I'll actually pick up some more craggly stuff and it'll be fantastic. Um, and that's what I do. And I never throw the bag out until I'm ready to actually fry, fry, fry. So now I'm just gonna finish this up and put everything in the refrigerator until I'm ready to fry. And of course, as I mentioned, I'll check for wet spots on the chicken and put it back in the bag if I feel it needs more flour to cover up those. But at least four hours you want in the refrigerator. And now with all the prep work done, we're ready to fry up. I'm gonna first do the paper bag method and we're going to heat the oil peanut oil to 350 degrees it's important to have it at that temperature because um, we're going to put the chicken in and the temperature is going to drop like a rock and no more than three pieces we don't want it to get below 300 ever we want it to really be in a sweet spot of 3 325 and so that's why I'm going to be monitoring with the um, the um, oil thermometer that I have in there. And it's not touching the bottom of the pan, just to let you know. It's hovering right about above. And I'm gonna check in a minute to make sure the pieces are not sticking together, because that's something that can happen, usually with the batter, sometimes with the, you know, the bag method, but rarely ever, but I'm still gonna check. Um, but never more than three pieces at a time. You want the sweet spot to be 325. And I've also set the timer for 15 minutes. Usually it takes between 12 to 15 minutes to fry, depending, there's a lot of variables. Did, you, did the temperature drop too low? Is it hovering below 325? Is it, is it closer to 350? I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen. So that's why I use a meat thermometer, and here I'm just breaking up the chicken, just to see where we're at. And we're gonna jump forward <laughs> because this is quite boring, I'm sure, for people. Um, I'm putting the thermometer back on, letting it hover above, and I'm gonna check, probably, uh, I checked right before, but these were done and I took them out. So, they're beautiful. I mean, gosh, look at that. Ugh. This is why I like the bag method, because it gives all these really nice, crunchy, craggly parts, and it's great. And now I'm putting in the drumsticks. And really the buttermilk brine does add so much flavor with the salt and sugar, but also um, the coating. It's just out of this world. And I'm gonna check this in a little bit. I did, jo I did a jump forward, so. I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to do a use the thermometer to check it. It wasn't done, so I had to put it back in. 
and I let it sit in there for another two minutes and then the alarm went off and I took it out anyway, so. Taking it out. So beautiful. Look at all those craggly parts. Oh my gosh. I'm hungry for fried chicken now. Great. And now I'm going to do my grandma's battered fried chicken. Now I do prefer the paper bag method, but this does have its pros. And one of the pros is, um, by the way, I let the temperature of the oil come back up to 350 before I added it because that's very important with this kind of chicken because it has a wet batter on it, a wet cold batter. And so it really, it's very important that you have the oil at temperature or you're gonna have greasy chicken. You don't want greasy chicken. It's very important that it never goes below the temperatures I've already discussed. Um, the reason why there's some people prefer this chicken is because if you want, you can, <laughs> You'll have it in the refrigerator, right? And you'll put it in the oven, probably about 300 for like 20 minutes. And it will literally become crispy again, just like you fried it. And you can take it to a picnic, um, you know, a barbecue, and it's just like you fried it. It's incredible. And I'm almost done here. It took me a long time. I think my mom joined me in the kitchen and heard us talking about the rascally rabbit, which was my mom's cat. And um, she was upset that the cat kept going across the street to visit another cat across the street. <laughs> but Kitty likes to visit <laughs> the other cat. So what are you gonna do? So this chicken is done and reached temperature and I'm gonna take it out and it's beautiful as well. If you can, do the brine, um, because the brine imparts so much flavor. Being in it for 24 hours, it's thoroughly seasoned. It's just incredible. I can't, you know. And like I said, if you want to add cayenne pepper or more pepper to any of the, the paper bag method or the batter, please do so. It's customizable. And this is what it looks like, the batter fried chicken and it's delicious and this is what the paper bag method looks like it's delicious to help our channel grow we're asking everybody to please like subscribe and comment because of how the youtube algorithm works these things are necessary for us to get referred to other people or we stay hidden and we want to grow our goal is 10,000 by the end of the year thank you i post videos every tuesdays thursdays and sundays on a variety of topics um, skincare, baking, cooking, um, sewing, gardening, and interior design. Thank you all so much for coming by and watching one of our videos. We're so grateful. I had a lot of fun making my grandma's fried chicken and eating it. <laughs> I hope you get a chance to make um, her fried chicken, either the bag method or the batter both are fantastic and we just appreciate you coming by and watching our videos thank you again to all of our new subscribers have a blessed day